Mirror, mirror on the lid. Who's the greatest of them all? It's without doubt the very best computer that we've ever built. It has two Thunderbolt ports, two USB 3 ports, and one HDMI port. Oh, if he only knew how right he was. We'll be taking a quick look at the 2019 13-inch i7 MacBook Pro. It's the CPU with the least coverage due to the high $300 upgrade cost. Who would do that? Well, I was curious. So there's four models broken into two tiers with the main differences being two versus four USB-C Thunderbolt 3 ports and a 15 watt versus 28 watt CPU. Whoa, that's quite a difference. They look like different classes of CPUs. So on the specs, it looks like the higher tier is twice as fast as the lower tier. Very confusing. So given the base clock speed differences, what exactly is the performance spread between the entry level 1.4 to the high end 2.8? It's just 12% for single and 9% for multi-core. To get that extra bit of performance costs a whopping $600. That's a lot of dough. Now that you've seen why the entry model is the best model to get, let me show you the model you may want to upgrade to if you insist on more performance. The 15 watt 1.7 gigahertz i7 is the next model to consider. And here's why. It splits the difference offering more performance but giving up some of the niceties like extra ports. But do you really need those extra ports with dongle life? If you're willing to pay, then it deserves a look because it's fascinating that a low power chip can produce such high performance but with the benefit of longer battery life. We can't ignore the elephant in the room, which is a new 2020 MacBook Air. On paper, it looks like a big threat to the 2019 MacBook Pro 13 inch because it's refreshed with a brand new quad-core CPU, a first for the Air lineup. In fact, online reviews have been recommending it over the 13-inch MacBook Pro. But long story short, no, it's not a replacement for the Pro. Stay tuned to the Cinebench R20 test for why that is. All right, let's take a look at performance compared to the last 15-inch model year to offer quad-core chips, which is the 2017 MacBook Pro. Starting with Black Magic Test, it gets a 1100 write and 1500 read. Not exactly class leading, but just going off the butt dyno, I feel no difference between this machine, my 15 inch MacBook Pro, and my 2018 6 core Mac Mini, which has double the read speeds. In fact, out of the three, the 13 inch feels the most responsive. I'm not sure why that is though. Next, Geekbench 4. A solid 5264 in single and 17585 in multi. Geekbench doesn't do a full load test, so you can think of it as average performance for the machine. So in my opinion, this is not the best benchmark to use between machines. So if you're looking at only MacBook Pro 13 inches, then this Geekbench test is pretty good. But if you're comparing it to the Air or to some Windows machine, it's actually not very good. But the next test is, so with Cinebench R20, it does a CPU test under heavy load where thermal performance will be a factor. The 15-inch should have an advantage here with the larger chassis managing heat better, but the 13-inch is running a cooler CPU. Wow, so that's a virtual dead heat, no pun intended. They perform almost exactly the same. Remember, this is a 15-watt entry-level CPU versus a 45-watt top-tier CPU. As far as the MacBook Air, this is where it falls apart. From recent testing, the quad-core i5 scores in the 900 point range. That's very underwhelming, likely because it's only a 10 watt chip with no heat sink. To put this lack of performance into perspective, a quad-core 15 inch MacBook from 2012 will still do 1200 on this test. Ouch. And this is from a third gen quad-core CPU. Now onto a custom rendering export operation exporting a 2 minute 46 second 4K footage that I've edited by moving the first minute to the back and adding a 30 second title and Gaussian blur effect. The 15 inch has the benefit of the dedicated graphics, the Radeon 560X, so it finishes in a very solid 1 minute 50 seconds. And the 13 inch comes in at 2 minutes 37 seconds. Having the dedicated GPU makes it 43% faster. I only have a SATA drive that will only do around 500 megabytes per second. And it comes in around 447 megabytes per second. Not bad. One last thing. As of the time of this video, both the 16 inch and Air have upgraded to the new scissor switch keyboards. 
but the 13-inch Pro is still using the butterfly switches, 3rd gen. It's not that bad, per se, but the issue is they went for form over function, unnecessarily making it difficult to find the correct arrow keys, versus having the superior inverted T layout. I'm glad they reverted back to it. So the i7 has the equivalent or better CPU of a mid-tier 2017 quad-core 15-inch MacBook Pro, but using a much cooler CPU. This is in effect the most efficient 13-inch notebook Apple offers. If you need more graphics power, then you need to get an external GPU, which makes this a fantastic configuration for someone like me. Even if performance was not a consideration, I would still choose a 2019 MacBook Pro over the new 2020 Air because having the touch bar is nice. It's like having shortcuts for apps without having to remember them. The display is of higher quality, both in color, accuracy, and brightness. And the best part is the battery life. According to notebookcheck.net versus the Air, you can get two and a half hours of more runtime doing light web tasks and one and a half hours against this big brother, the 28 watt version of the 13 inch, and even one hour more than the brand new 100 watt hour packing 16 inch MacBook Pro. That's pretty significant. I want my notebooks to have great battery life, so this is like having your cake and eating it too. So in summary, the 13 inch entry i5 MacBook Pro is where you should start, and then upgrade to the i7 if you really need every little ounce of power in a portable device. I don't recommend spending 600 more for the 2.8 gigahertz model since the 1.7 does close most of the gap. If you need more power, then I'd say just upgrade to the 16 inch models. As far as the Air, yes, it is much cheaper. If you're not after performance, then it's a fine choice. But be aware that there are lots of discounts going on for the 2019 year model due to its age. If you can find one config like the Air that's within $250 or less, I would seriously give it some consideration. I hope this video was helpful to you. Thanks for watching and see you next time.